Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Lalita Mutosubramanian. I am a graduate student at uh, New Mexico State University. Um, so this was a project I did uh, collaborating with uh, CHCS from UNC Greensboro. Um, so I did this project as a part of my summer internship. Um, I'm also a newbie to OSM, so I made very few edits in OSM, if you can check out. Um, so uh, when I started this project, I was pretty excited uh, to know how I can use OSM as well as a part of this project. Um, so uh, in this presentation, I'm going to focus mo mostly on the project I did and also um, to say how we can generalize it using uh, OpenStreetMaps. Um, so I'm going to start providing an introduction about why uh, most of the counties and cities are uh, using, are, are looking into affordable housing solutions right now. Um, and then we move on to, um, to the tools that I used um, and then to the Guilford County maps uh, because that's, the, that's where CHCS is located. Um, and then what am I going to do in the future about this project? So uh, giving a brief overview, uh, like I said, this project was initiated by Center for Housing and Community Studies. Uh, CHCS is a university-based research center which is focusing on providing evaluation and technical assistance uh, for housing within the Office of Research and Engagement uh, from University of Greensboro. As a, part of the, uh, as a part of the mission, CHCS is committed to investigating and understanding uh, how the social and economical factors in, in that area is going to affect the people uh, or the residents and also affect how the, how the housing is going to be shaped in the future. Uh, so the main uh, the main focus is to uh, the main focus of their project was to uh, preserve and expand uh, state and federal funding for housing improvements after identifying potential ideas. Um, so this is where this is the part where they need more tools uh, in order to get funding from the government, um, and that that kind of barrier is always there because such such project uh, such projects are usually uh, taken up by nonprofit organizations and um, the, and and if you see i did a i did a quite a bit of research on to how these projects are being performed and i saw that um, even previously there are a lot of students who were involved in creating these web maps and tools um, so if you if you look at it in funding perspective um, Students don't get funding to do such kind of projects. It's a, it's a cool project to do for summer internship. It's a cool project to do for my own experience in GIS, but um, where do I get the funding from? So these tools are essential uh, for, for uh, such nonprofit organizations to get funding from the government. Um, according to the Housing Hub, their goal was to increase the collective capacity beyond 6,000 low-income people, which are currently served. They plan to not only provide a low-income housing, but also education and job training services. Uh, the group said that 55% uh, of households in Greensboro are of low income, and more than 35,000 families uh, spend more than 30% of their income on housing. Housing is more expensive in urban areas um, and also in rural areas these days, um, since there is no enough housing in there. Uh, so it's a statewide problem in North Carolina as such. Um, many of the nonprofit organizations have open hubs, not just in North Carolina, but also in California. Um, also in Miami, and a lot of the states that we can name. Uh, so um, we also use big data to identify affordable housing solutions for residents. Moving on to, uh, moving on to how this project is being done. Most of the publicly owned property, especially the ones that are vacant, are not being utilized properly. Uh, so the next step in solving this problem would be to look at exactly uh, what tools that would suit all these requirements and give a gist of uh, what to do with all the available resources which are marked as vacant. Although there were many tools that existed uh, with, the, uh, with CHCS already, most of them failed to update it automatically. So the county has their own data set, their own parcel, uh, parcel uh, databases, but those parcels keep changing, the tax files keep changing, but the actual update on the tool doesn't go in. So web solutions prove to be one of the, uh, one of the better options for doing such kind of mapping. Um, and also it is important to use the, the parcel data and the tax files in order to incorporate all the, all the data sets that the county has. Um, I also think that uh, these tools can also be used uh, for us mappers to use it in OSM. Um, there is actually a thread in uh, Wiki, OSM Wiki on parcels, where a discussion on uh, why OSM does not use uh, uh, parcel, parcel uh, data or tax, uh, tax files. 
Um, so that's an open discussion that I want to have at the end of the presentation. Questions are welcome and we can go over this. Uh, so some of the open source tools that I used uh, were OpenStreetMaps for geocoding, um, Leaflet as web mapping tool, and also took from hel uh, help from S3 web mapping tools uh, because the data was on e ESR API. Um, so Leaflet provided all the tools to do geocoding uh, with OpenStreetMap and also uh, incorporating all the data from the uh, tax files. Uh, having talked a bit about uh, having talked a bit about the project, uh, uh, so I also researched something into something about how I can use it with QGIS. Uh, the problem with QGIS would also be not not updated simultaneously when the changes go in. So web mapping um, and using the current data was really the solution to it. So uh, some of the other projects that are investigating affordable housing solutions are um, given in this slide. So I, I've also given links to uh, links to them. So if you see the first one is the Land Access Neighborhood Development Tool, which is developed by University of Miami. So uh, uh, Miami-Dade County is sandwiched between two national parks, um, and it also has a shortage of developable land, which is an intractable problem that puts affordable housing out of out of reach for low-income groups and also for moderate uh, income residents who already spend more than 70% of their income on housing and transportation in Miami. Uh, so they had a new uh, free online mapping tool which was developed by University of Miami Solutions Lab, um, which identified more than 500 million square feet of vacant land, um, which are underutilized land across Miami-Dade County and also in its 34 municipalities. LA also figured out that it needs more than its estimated uh, land area. It is estimated that additional land area of six, uh, 600,000 square units are necessary to meet the current needs, let alone the future housing requirements. So if you go and uh, look into the links, you can find a detailed information on uh, what the project is about and what are the requirements that they need more to accommodate the housing solutions. And next one is the CHCS Greensboro. Um, we are currently working on it. Um, so there are, there are a lot more updates that has to go in. So uh, right now we have the parcel data files integrated, the geocoding integrated, classified the parcel files. Um, there are a lot more verification that needs to be done. So the parcel files are huge and complex. Uh, they are integrated directly from the web instead of local data. Uh, so one of the important challenges that I faced in this was correctness and accuracy of data. Although the tax, the tax in the parcel file was updated by the county. So I can give you a specific example uh, for this kind of a situation. So let's say there's a building which was under construction. Um, so that will not eventually go in on the parcel file until and unless it's completed. But that can be verified using OpenStreetMaps. So there was, a, there, there was a discrepancy in the data. So what I did was to pinpoint the data in OpenStreetMap, and I found that there were user notes that were left saying there is a building that actually exists, but it is under construction. The other scenario that I can give is, um, is a land area across a river, which was being mapped as parks uh, on both the sites. And if you see the recreational activities happen only on, on one side of the river, but not on the other bank. So such kind of information can be found using a crowdsourcing tool like OpenStreetMaps uh, open rather than just using the, uh, the parcel files. So this is the, these are some of the challenges, uh, correctness, um, and it has to be verified with other sources. So here's an interesting link um, that uh, explains about, that, that's the wiki data about uh, parcel data files in uh, OpenStreetMaps. Um, so uh, the first step towards this, uh, this process is to get hold of the parcel layer. Some of the important features that we had was to geocode and have uh, different layers so that user can view an op uh, open street maps, uh, user can view an ESRI, and also on a, on, and can load it on a lighter, a lighter API. So um, we figured out that we needed to work with complex parcel data. Integrating everything at a place uh, would make it versatile and it would, it would be a problem. So, uh, uh, so uh, this has to be used with some kind of cloud solutions like Amazon AWS or something like that. So I stumbled upon a wiki page while doing, uh, while doing this history uh, on why parcel data is not being used on OSM. So parcel is a very generalized term. Uh, parcel can denote a lot or a tract or a piece of real property. 
Uh, local tax assessors in United States use a recorded document uh, to stream the main tax map, but they are not actually uh, they are not actually updated by the assessors, uh, not by the government, but by the assessors. So they all maintain a unique number to it, which is called as the APN, and uh, they also maintain the uh, tax parcels like value, the, the exemptions, etc., and contact information for the parcel owner. The assessors uh, may or may not have it readily available in a GIS format such as shape files. So when they are available, they're often maintained uh, by a third party, but not by the assessor. So uh, we know that in OpenStreetMap, we map what we see. Um, so the whole idea of using these tax files would, would provide some sort of solution. So I know there is a field called land use, which can be marked as residential. Uh, we can probably, uh, what we can do is we can probably classify them on a widely used uh, basis. So most of the uh, widely used uh, classifications were, uh, so this is the two different layers uh, that I was talking about. So most of the uh, classifications were uh, institutional, government, residential, commercial, agriculture, and development restricted. So this, uh, I know this is going to take some kind of a research to go back and uh, focus on what are the different classification that each and every county is going to have. Um, since since this is just a single county, um, it's easier for me to just extract all the data from the from the tax files and import it. Go and verify with OpenStreetMaps. Go and verify with other sources and and do it. But if this tool needs to be generalized so that it can be used used by other counties because now is the time where everybody are looking into uh, affordable housing solutions. Um, so uh, if you go and look into many counties which are urbanized, they all do affordable housing solutions. So importing this kind of uh, this kind of uh, user user using uh, tags like land use is equal to residential is not going to really help in integrating uh, OSM data, whereas we use OSM for all, for all the other features like transportation for geocoding. It would be a really nice uh, add-on feature to have. Um, so we can, we can have uh, multiple classifications and we can tag it to all the property that we, ma uh, that we map, on the, map, on OSM, uh, map on OSM. So here the idea is that uh, it's, ju it's just not to find the housing or the residential property in the area, but to provide the vacant lands in the area, and also to see, um, and also to see uh, which which of these areas have been marked differently, and which of these might have more solutions to uh, to the to the government. For example, a house that can be marked as a multifamily less than four essentially means that that particular piece of property can accommodate a building uh, suitable for a multifamily less than four, but actually it might it may be larger than that. So if we find contiguous uh, parcels of such data, such, uh, such land area can be modified to accommodate more users or more housing solutions is the, is the ultimatum of what I'm talking about. So, um, so this tool shows the vacant land area. Um, uh, in, so this is just a screenshot of the web map that I put up here. So in this, we can search the uh, search the area or search using the zip codes um, and also find the vacant land area. So in the future, we are planning to uh, use contiguous parcel attributes. Uh, as I said, it's a, it's a work under progress. And so we, we are going to see which can be used uh, effectively. And we are also planning to include a zoning and uh, transportation to find out um, which places are more connected and whether we can have whether we can improve more housing solution in that particular area so that's all i have questions